Testing, testing. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise God. Good to see you in the house. Of, that's not me singing. <laughs> one day, one day it will be with the help of the Lord. Amen. Uh, I'm, I'm still trying to learn Spanish with the help of the Lord. That's first, and then singing's next. Amen. I save, I save the worst for last. Singing. <laughs> Well, we got a church cleanup date, which I am glad to see. Volunteers need it Saturday, November 11th. That'll be next Saturday, not this Saturday, correct? Yes, this Saturday. That'll be this Saturday. And uh, between noon and 3, there's a lot of little jobs and things to do, car carpet stains and leaves to pick up and all kinds of stuff, all kinds of fun stuff to make the church look better. Amen. November 19th will be our anniversary service. We're excited about that. Can't wait to have uh, Brother Jones with us preaching. I hope he's out of Africa. There was, is he out? Does anybody know? Did he make it? He's home. Praise God. I hope, <laughs> hope he didn't bring nothing with him. <laughs> I don't mean uh, gifts. I, I mean things you don't want. Amen. And uh, it happens if they... If People come here, they get stuff that they don't want. <laughs> Amen. So he'll be with us. Um, uh, Bishop Tracy will be teaching Sunday school that morning, leadership. You're going to want to be here for that. It's going to be a good time. We want to put our best foot forward and the church look as good as we can make it look. And, you know, just thank you. <clears throat> thank you, everyone, everyone who, have, who has picked up a hammer, pushed a vacuum cleaner, a broom, everything you have done to make this church what it is. It's just, I'm, I'm starting to really appreciate what God is doing here. Amen. I, I hope that don't sound strange to you, but sometimes you get so caught up in the work and what's next, and, and I know this from personal experience, what's next, what's next, what's next. I remember my first house and a little 900-something square foot rectangle home and one of the first things I did was replace, finally, after years of living there, replace the carpet. It was so bad. I, I'm glad we didn't have cell phones to take a picture of how dirty, how much dirt was underneath that carpet on that cement slab. You guys know that sand and dirt kind of goes right through your carpet, and you peel that back, and it's like mud. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, man, my kids were playing on this. <laughs> So we finally were able to afford the flooring and, and the tools to do it. The Pergo, when it first came out, this is how long ago it was, 23 years, 22 years ago, something like that, and uh, replaced it all. And, and I thought, Lord, if I could just replace this flooring, I'd be happy. We got it done. I sat in the middle. I had my chair sat down <sighs> for about, Brother Terry, about five seconds. I was just happy. And then my mind said, what's next? I realized at that moment that I would never be happy. I did. The Lord said, see, you're never going to be happy. Amen. And uh, so after that, we did the roof, the, the doors, the windows, the siding, built a garage, light fixtures. I mean, he put, redid the, the electrical. And now you're seeing where I got all this from. <laughs> Why I am the way, the way I am. I just can't leave it alone. I, if it can be updated or fixed, I want to do it. I want to update it and fix it. And, uh, but I want to pause and just look at where God has brought us from. Just want to pause. Thank you, Jesus. Can you do that with me just for a moment this, mo this evening? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for every dollar, every hour that was donated. Every skill, God, every, every hammer that was, that, was, uh, that was hammered, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, God. Praise the Lord. Amen. It feels good to give God thanks. Uh, quickly, uh, P7, if you're interested, if you're a, a teenager, I guess, is that what you said? A teenager and you're interested in starting a P7 group, you need to meet Hannah in the conference room. A mock Bible study, yep. We're at, so 
Come to the conference room. We'll just miss you here in a moment after our worship. I just wanted to say that before I forgot. And I feel like I'm forgetting something. I'm trying to. I'm stalling because I'm trying to remember. Anybody do that nowadays as you get older? Youth rally. I can't read the sign, but I see youth rally. This Friday, it's more life, right? Amen. This Friday, youth rally at 7 o'clock. Thursday, you and I have a meeting. More life. We're going to meet there and discuss the Jesus tent revival. Amen. Details for next year. We're going to discuss how we can help and, and support that and maybe even have something happen here in Mount Morris. Amen. So I'm, ex- Amen. I'm excited about that. I'm going to be pitching Mount Morris. We need to get involved in that. That would be awesome and cool. And prayer meeting at my house. That's what I wanted to say. Prayer meeting still Thursday at my house. Amen. We've been having such a wonderful time in prayer. It is just, it is just, I don't know what to say, it's fun, it's anointed, it's awesome. If you can be there, you need to be there. If you don't already have ministry going on, if you don't already have something else happening, you need to be there. There's food, there's fellowship. The atmosphere is, there's a fireplace. The atmosphere is just so good. Amen. And most of all, most importantly, God shows up. And we just have a wonderful time in the Holy Ghost and prayer, and it's just powerful. It's just, it's a different, different kind of level, different thing, uh, praying, uh, how do you say it, together, more together, closer together. It's how they did it in the Bible, house to house. It's just apostolic, it's just, and it works. Amen. It's such a good time. Anything else? I, people have other announcements, anything I didn't remember? Amen. Glad to have uh, Sister Reyes back and Juliana back all the way from St. Louis. So glad that we had the real McCoy coming out of coming out of First Apostolic Church of Mount Morris. Amen. What a what an awesome, awesome thing to happen here. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Any anything else before we get to some worship? Amen. You ready? Uh, one more thing, we're going to enter into prayer. Would you stand? Let's, we're going we're gonna to pray to open this up. And I was talking with uh, Brother Dockery before church, and he, he was right in the Holy Ghost, and, or maybe I was in the Holy Ghost. He was confirming it to me, or vice versa. It doesn't matter. We both were in the same spirit, same mind. And, and I was thinking today as I was praying and studying, I want to cut your, praying, your prayer list in half. And that sounds nuts. Pastor, you're supposed to be giving us stuff to pray about. You're supposed to be adding things to our list. Brother Thompson, I want to cut your your list down by by saying this. If you are praying, asking God for victory, can I tell you that you already have it? Am I right? He's the, the God of victory. If you're asking God for healing, can I tell you that God already knows the day and the time he's going to heal you? It's done. It's done. But to this evening, I, I would like us to begin to pray for some things, not because they're problems, not because we're hurting, not because they're situations, but because God is moving. And I am getting report after report after report coming back to me. Pastor, pray. I have a friend at work who wants to know more about church. Pastor, will you pray for me? This this man came up and he wants a Bible study. Pastor, would you pray? I've been getting report after report that God is moving through each and every one of you. And I want to pray that God uh, will speak through you and that God will give you the words that you need to say. I want to pray a special prayer over the Dockery home because God has opened, their house has been opened up to so much ministry and so many Bible studies uh, and so many things that are happening there. The men's Bible studies happening there. He has his own Bible study. He said he's teaching three Bible studies a week. Amen. I want God to bless. I want God to move on those families uh, that need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, They need the Holy Ghost, and they can get it in your living room and in your kitchen. They can get it there. Praise God. And I want God to open up a Bible study in your home. 
Amen. Pastor, why don't we pray for this healing, this sickness? We will, but let's pray that God bring us souls that we can teach Bible studies to, that we can open up the gospel to. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Kelly, for occupying that side over there. (laughs) Amen. Next time, bring 30 people with you. Praise God. (laughs) Hallelujah. Another one that people are talking to and asking questions about church. Am I right? I just want to pray for you to be a witness. I want to ask God to give you the words to speak, the spirit, the anointing. And if that's not happening for you right now, why don't you pray for your brother, for your sister? Lift your hand towards heaven and ask God, bless, bless their house. Bless their home. Bless their Bible study. Lord, give them, give them the anointing. Anoint their lips of clay, God. Help them to say what needs to be said, God. Let them be used in the gifts of, of knowledge and, and, and prophecy, Lord Jesus. Help them to say the right thing, God. To have the right spirit, the right attitude, Lord Jesus. We're running out of time. Time is running out. If my brother or sister doesn't currently have someone they're witnessing to, God, give them a divine appointment. Give them a divine appointment right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Continue, God, to grow this church using each and every member. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Praise God. Come on up and lead us in worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I praise your praise. Your name. You are the beginning and You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I praise your name. I praise your name. Hallelujah. Holy, holy. You are worthy of my praise. Hallelujah. Holy, holy. You are worthy of my praise. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I praise your name. I praise your name. Hallelujah. Holy, holy. You are worthy of my praise. Hallelujah. You are worthy of my praise. Hallelujah. Holy, holy. You are worthy of my praise. Hallelujah. Holy, holy. You are worthy of my praise. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 I praise your name, I praise your name, hallelujah, 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 I praise your name. I praise your name. You 
are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I praise your name. I praise your name. Hallelujah. Holy, holy. You are worthy of my praise. Hallelujah, holy, holy, you are worthy of my praise. Hallelujah, holy, holy, you are worthy of my praise. Hallelujah, holy, holy, you are worthy of my praise. Praise God. Brother Dockery spoke also. He said, you know, we pray a lot and we're always asking for something. <laughs> I don't think it's a problem to ask for something. We just got to ask for the right thing. Amen. When was the last time you asked for a closer walk with Jesus? When was the last time you asked to know him more and more? I'm telling you, I feel the Holy. If you ask God, I want to know you, Jesus. I want to know you more and more and more. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ushers, come quickly. Amen. I'm not wasting time. I'm just using it up. <laughs> I just don't like to be in a hurry. You're here now. <laughs> Man, some of you are, you worked. You have a right to be tired. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's ask God to bless this offering. Amen. Uh, bless the offering. Bless those who can, can't give. Uh, hope everybody here with everything we need and let us be able to worship you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Why don't you come and march and give as God has given unto you? Amen. Everyone else is dismissed. May be seated. Amen. Welcome once again to Bible study. Those online, welcome. We're glad that you are watching. We're glad your your uh, your mind is on the Lord. We just would like for your your bottom to be here. <laughs> is that okay? Is that politically? I don't know if that's the right thing to say. They gave me the microphone, so I just keep talking. I just I just dig a hole. Well, as I promised, we're going to talk about giving. What a great subject. What a great subject. Because I don't know too many givers that are hated. Think about that for a moment. You want to be loved? Turn into a, turn into a giver. People will love you. Amen. <laughs> you want to be hated? Don't give anything. Be stingy. Praise God. Did that put some things in perspective? It's hard to get mad at a giver. It's hard. Amen. Some people can do it, but it's very difficult. I was talking to, to Pastor Cavetto and uh, about being here November 19th, coming up here soon, our anniversary service, and I can't wait for him to, to be here and see the more changes that have taken place since he's been gone pastoring in Ypsilanti. And he said, you know, I want to thank you, Pastor, for saying for one thing that you said. I'm like, thank God I said something right. 
<laughs> I said something that's, that can be remembered. And then he said, he said, you made the statement a long time ago that giving is a heart condition. And I'm a little loud up here for me anyway. Giving is a heart condition. And he said, uh, I have taken that statement and brought it to my church and it has changed everything there. And then I thought, man, that's awesome. I wish I thought of that statement. <laughs> but I didn't. I, said, I got that from my pastor. <laughs> when he got up to teach on giving and tithing and offerings and all that, one of the first things he, he didn't title the message like I am t- titling it, giving is a heart condition. He just, uh, before he got into it, before he got into the nitty gritty and the word of God, he said, you know what, folks? It's, giving is just a heart condition. That's the best thing I can tell you because someone wants to argue 10%, 8%, 5%, 15%, whatever, <laughs> whatever your argument is, wherever you think you got that from. But the best way to describe a giver or giving is that it's just a heart condition. Amen. Praise God. How many here believe that marriage or relationship is 50-50? We were taught that. I was taught that growing up. Until I realized if I only gave half of me, I was shortchanging my wife 50%. 50% uh, in a grading scale is an absolute failure. It's an F. Amen. I realized marriage is really 100-100. Amen. Just thinking about that, relationship is really 100-100. 100% of you, 100% of whoever. God, he didn't give 50% at the cross. He didn't give half of him. The Bible says he gave all. He gave 100%. Everything, he gave it all. I've said this before, but heaven, when Jesus was on the cross, and when he was basically, the Bible says he was a substitutionary sacrifice. He paid for our sins. It is finished, paid in full, was the last thing that he said. Heaven was literally emptied out. All the money, the vaults of heaven were emptied out and given on the cross at Calvary to pay, Grandma Jean, for your sin and my sin. And all, whosoever will. And knowing that and understanding that, how much should we give back to God? What do you think? 10%? <laughs> Some people have based their whole relationship with God on 10%. Isn't that a silly thing? When God gave 100, I'm going to give him 10% back of his own stuff. That's silly. It's a good starting point. This message is entitled Giving is a Heart Condition, or or you can even say a conditioned, a condition of the heart. And I understand that it's not easy all the time. It's like the Grinch. Christmas is around the corner. Amen. Are you ready? Then you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. You better. You should be ready to celebrate. Amen. It's not about gifts and money. It's about the one gift that has kept on giving. And if you don't know that yet, we'll have, a, have, to, have to have another Bible study on that. <laughs> Amen. But the Grinch, you know, it, giving was a process. Anybody know the story? Am I the only one who's watched the Grinch? Am I the only... Secular pastor here, I guess. <laughs> and you remember the scene at the very end when he realized that all that stuff that he had stolen, that the people didn't, it had nothing to do with their celebration. And what really had happened was they had maybe made that their focus until it was gone. Then they realized, well, we've been focus, focusing on the wrong thing. And when he saw that and heard the, the celebration there in Whoville, <laughs> the Bible, the Bible, I knew I was going to do that. The story says that his heart grew. How, how many times? 
three sizes. Because you know why? He made up in his mind, I'm going to give this stuff back. All back. And it just grew his heart. Tonight, I hope that maybe if you didn't have a giving heart, you know, maybe if you were somebody when pastor says, we're going to get a new drum set, you were like, what? Why? <laughs> What's wrong with the old one? What's wrong with, with, with the old piano? You know, maybe you were somebody when pastor asked for, for money for, it was a, we tried to get a, uh, a church van that didn't work out. But we end up getting a brand new sound system and a brand new computer and brand new everything. And maybe you were somebody who said, we'll never get that. That'll never happen. Well, it did. Spoiler alert. We raised the money. God used each and every one of you and all kinds of people from other places. And, and I'm telling you, when you challenge God, he's, he rises to the occasion. So maybe if you were one of those people, and I know there's, probably one or two here or maybe listening online they're not here they're on they're at home and somebody starts maybe you're like me like or I should say like I used to be when I sat in that chair and pastor started talking about we need money for this and that I would say what I can't give all that and in my immaturity I didn't realize that pastor wasn't asking me to give it all he was asking me to give what I could give. And now we, we need chairs. And if you look downstairs, they're there. That's called faith. <laughs> I just believe that we are going to raise the money for those chairs. So I went ahead and put them on the credit card, bought them ahead of time. So we'd be ready for our, our November 19th anniversary service. Amen. I felt a positive boost there when I said that. And we're coming to the time of year where we have our free will offering. It's just, you just give to God because. Because you have a heart condition to give. And I put a number, and I felt today in prayer, I was like, that was a dumb thing to do. Why would you tell someone to give 30 bucks? What if they wanted to give 100? That was silly. What if they wanted to give 1,000? You know, what if they wanted to pay for all the chairs? You shouldn't have put a limit. I'm capping you at, you know, I was saying if every man who has a job and woman who has a job can give $30, that'd be awesome. Well, let me take that back. Just give. This is a free will offering. There's no percentage. No, Everybody's going to have a different number because everybody has a different amount in the bank account. You know, Brother Brian wants to give 10000 and I say, well, I want to do that too. I can't. <laughs> he can. I can't. That's going to be a little different. You don't know which Brian I'm talking about. Why did everybody look back at that guy? What? I purposely didn't say a last name. <laughs> Brother so-and-so. How about that? Sister so-and-so. What if God just pricks their heart and they just decide to Give some ridiculous amount of money. Now, this offering doesn't come out of your tithes. You don't say, well, there's my tithes for the next year. This is just above and beyond extra. How many want God to be above and beyond to you? How many want God to be an extra God? Hallelujah. Amen. I know I do. And we haven't even got the scripture yet. Matthew 6, 21. Ooh. For you ever, I feel the Holy Ghost. You ever get to that point when you prayed so much and felt so much of God that you try to read Scripture and you can't? <laughs> For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Whatever you put your money into. Amen. Whatever you spend all your money on, that's where your heart is. Praise God. Now, I know I'm going to talk about giving is not just finances. And it's also giving of talent and skill and other things, and that's true too. But it doesn't negate money because we got to have money to run everything. 
where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And I need people to be honest with themselves. You know, I've, I've known people that have said, I've given enough. <laughs> what a foolish statement. How can you possibly say that? Jesus gave 100%. Have you given all? I've given enough this year. I don't know about that. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 7. This is the amplified version. Let each one give as he has made up his own mind and purposed in his heart. Let each man give as he has made up his own mind and purposed in his heart. Not reluctantly or sorrowfully <laughs> or under compulsion. That's not how we do it around here. We don't, we don't take up an offering and sift it and look at it and say, okay, we're going to have to do that one more time. We didn't get enough. <laughs> Bless you. We don't do that. That will be compulsion. For God loves, he takes pleasure in, he prizes above other things and is unwilling to abandon or to do without a cheerful, joyous, Prompt to do it, giver, whose heart is in his giving. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Do not give until your heart is ready to give. Don't do it. We don't need bitter giving. We don't need, God will, money's nothing for God. God will use somebody else. God will bless somebody else. But if you don't have the right heart condition, if you have not plowed your heart, if you have not tilled your heart, if you have not prepared your heart for the seed of the word of God, for the seed of the blessings of God, then just don't. It's okay. Just hang in there. I think God will give you a change of heart. You, you're just like the Grinch. <laughs> and you'll have your moment on the hill when you realize stuff is just stuff. Amen. So we can't have the bigotry of low expectations, which I believe is 10%. I'm just going to throw that. That is the bigotry of low expectations. There's a man who started, came to church, and familiar story, he started paying his tithes and on 100 bucks a week that he was making, uh, and he asked his pastor if he could pray for him, that he could get a better job, and before, he did, and he got a better job, and he, he, he's committed to pay his tithe on, on, on the job that he, he got and the increase that he got. And, and he asked his pastor, pray again for, for, for a better job, and I'm, I'm going to give according to whatever God gives me. And he said, okay, they prayed. He got another raise and a promotion. And before you know it, he's vice president of the company. And before you know it, he came back to his pastor and he said, hey, these ties are too much. That's true. When you were making 100 bucks a week, it was easy to give $10. When he started making a couple thousand a week, it got harder. Why? The percentage didn't change. What happened? Pastor said, I've got an idea. Let's pray that God will give you that $100 a week job, and then you can go back to paying 10 bucks, and it'll be easy. Mark chapter 12, verse number 41. And Jesus sat over against the treasury. and be, I'm not going to get through this. I'm going to tell you that right now. It ain't going to happen. And Jesus sat over against the treasury. You were right. You prophesied, Sister Leah. You were correct. <laughs> I hope it's, I may be long-winded, but I hope it's good. I hope you learned something. He's, <laughs> for the third time, and Jesus sat over against the treasury, and beheld how the people cast money into the treasure. And many that were rich cast in much. Or many that were rich cast in of their surplus, of, of what they had extra. Not a heart condition, but just extra that they had, they gave it. 
And this caught the attention of Jesus. And, and let me, I watched a, a little clip it on Michael Jordan. Anybody know how much money Michael Jordan is worth? $2.5 billion and rising. He, since he stopped playing basketball, he did not get poor. He got richer. And they were, get, they were saying his value, they were giving his value, and then they were saying, and above all that, Michael Jordan gives at least $100 million a year in charity. Isn't that wonderful? How many would like to give $100 million in charity? It's easy if you have $2.5 billion in the bank. Do you know what $100 million of $2.5 billion is? 4%. If you right now are given 5%, you have outgiven Michael Jordan. You have. Because if he were to give the minimum, the bigotry, or low expectations, 10%, he'd have to give $250 million. So I don't get all googly-eyed and excited when somebody tells me about a rich person who gave a million dollars. I'm like, well, that's like me giving $10. But all I can do is account for myself. Verse number 42. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing, basically two pennies. And he called unto him his disciples. And and this is just amazing to me that Jesus said, hey, come here, guys. i got to show you something. I gotta, I, I've got to show you, you've got to see this. And he saith unto them, verily I say unto you. He, that means, listen, I've got something important to tell you. Muy importante. Or mucho importante. Sister Irma will correct me. <laughs> verily I say unto you that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. Then the total, not just one person or two people, then the total, then every single person that has given, this poor widow has outgiven all of them. Can I say that giving from the heart and giving from your living gets God's attention? It will get his attention. Well, this is all I got. If I give this, then what? Well, you've got God's attention, I'm telling you that much. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. She gave 100%. Now, the Bible doesn't go on and say that when she left there, she became a millionaire or anything. like. I, I have no idea what became of her, except for she's talked about today. <laughs> Except for she got the attention of Jesus, and he was able to teach a lesson to the disciples. Don't look at the amount that an individual gives, as if that's a lot. Look at their living. How are they giving based upon their living? Amen. Moses had a responsibility to create an atmosphere of giving. We're going to go from Old Testament to New Testament, so put your seatbelts on. And Moses spake, Exodus 35, verse number 4, And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, He's speaking what God has told him to say. Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. God commanded, get an offering. Whosoever is of a willing heart. He said it in the very beginning. I don't want money from somebody who doesn't want to give it. Now, can I tell you this one more time, that if you don't want to give it, it's heart check time? This is an opportunity for you to figure out what is wrong with me. And I told you that I was the one sitting there thinking, Pastor, are you kidding me? We can't do that. I can't do all that. In my immaturity, in my, I'm going to tell you, one of the biggest reasons why I was upset is because I wasn't a good steward of my money. Sometimes the people that get the most upset about giving is the ones that aren't really doing a good job at managing their money. 
Now, whose fault is that? Amen. <laughs> it's pastor's fault. He didn't teach me to be a better steward. Now, that's one reason why people get upset. Another reason is, why is everybody looking at me? Just because I have a big bank account. That's another reason that you have to look at your heart and check your heart condition. Here's another reason. You think you can take it with you. You are deceived. I've said this before, but it's like the rich uncle who who finally died. Everybody's waiting for him to die because they wanted all his money. And uh, he didn't want to give any of his money because they knew everybody else wanted it, so he didn't want to give it. So he, he worked it out with his nephew. He said, I want you to bury me with all my money. His nephew said, yes, sir, uncle, I'll do that. I'll make sure that happens. Before they threw that casket, before they buried that casket six feet under, he said, hang on. He wrote a check for $1 million, put it in the casket. There you go. You got it. Let him bring it, an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass and Benjamins. And no, I'm just kidding. It doesn't say Benjamins. Someone paint, you guys paying attention? And blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair. And every, verse number 10, skipping down, and there was more things God uh, was, was saying. This is, you know what God was doing? He was saying, this is what we need specifically. He was giving them a list. Don't just give willy-nilly. We know what we're giving to. We know what we need. We need chairs. <laughs> we, need, we need a few extra tables. Amen. It's, we're, we're specific. This is what we need. And the Bible says in verse number 10, and every wise-hearted among you shall come. Every wise-hearted, pay attention, those that are smart and make all that the Lord hath commanded. So you're smart if you want to give. In verse number 21, and they came. They did. The wise-hearted, the smart ones. Everyone whose heart stirred him up. It was Moses' job. He probably preached this. I mean, the Bible doesn't give us every detail, but what they were doing was building a tabernacle in the wilderness. God said, I, I, I need a place. I need a place. To, I need a place on earth. And they decided to build this. He gave them instructions, and this is what you're going to need. This is how you're going to do it. And Moses was like, and God's going to come, and God's going to dwell, uh, and there's going to be the mercy seat, and we're going to have, we're gonna have the, the, the candle, and we're going to have the table of shoe bread, uh, and this is going to represent this, uh, and that. Let's talk about the tabernacle. And, we're gonna, and the priests are going to go through, and there's going to be anointing, uh, and there's going to be a place of sacrifice, uh, and there's gonna, this is going to happen. It's going to be awesome. And then God's going to, when he receives it, there'll be fire. There'll be all this. It's going to be great. He had to sell it to him. And we're going to have a place to sit down. We're going to have chairs. It's going to be great. We ran We didn't have enough a couple weeks ago. It's going to be fantastic. He's, those that the hearts were stirred up uh, and everyone whom his spirit made willing. That's the small s. I'm waiting for the Holy Ghost uh, to speak to me uh, and tell me uh, how much I need to give. <laughs> Are you? Are you really? Because the Bible really teaches us a little s. That means God's waiting for your spirit uh, <laughs> to get right uh, It's a little S. It's not a big S. You're the little S. He's the big S. <laughs> You've got the problem. God doesn't have the problem. He already knows how to give. He gave all. You need to learn to give all. <laughs> Whose spirit made willing, amen, a free will offer. This is your spirit. This ain't what God is making you do or compelling you. This is you. This is what is all, what's going on in here. 
And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation and for all his service and for the holy garments, everything that needed to get built. Verse number 26, and all the women whose hearts stirred them up in wisdom spun goat's hair. Isn't that amazing? The Bible doesn't separate between men and women giving. It's everybody gives. Everyone. Exodus chapter 36, verse number 2, moving on. And Moses called Bezali and, and Aholab and every wise-hearted man. Here we go again, every wise-hearted man. We had every wise-hearted woman doing something. Every wise-hearted man in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, even everyone whose heart stirred him up to come unto the work to do it. You see, Paul told Timothy, he said, stir up the gift. Stir up the gift of God that was, that was given to you by the laying on of hands. He's, you know what that means? It means agitate it. Get it moving. Get, get, it, get it working. Stir it up. You know what happens when you, when you don't stir something? It separates. Amen. It separates or it gets stale. Stirred up. Some, we need to stir ourselves up. Man, wake up. God has been so good to me. Wake up. God's given you the Holy Ghost. He's given you salvation. He's blessed you. He's made a way. He's kept you. He's healed your body. He's answered prayers. Uh, God is so good to me. What do I, what could I give in exchange There was such an excitement in the camp. We're going to build a place for God. We're going to build a place for God. God is going to come and visit. uh, And all he needs is is my skill, my talent, my money. That's all he needs. And he's going to come and visit us. Well, we are building a place for God. Amen. So that people can come and feel the presence of the Lord. And verse number three, and they received of Moses all the offerings which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to make it withal. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. Every morning someone would wake up in their spirit would be right. <laughs> They'd wake up uh, and something would come over them. They're like, you know what? I think I can give a little more. Honey's saying, what do you mean a little more? <laughs> we only got enough for, so, no, hang on, hang on. Let's redo the numbers again. Let's see. I think if we cut back or if we do this, maybe we can bring some more. It's not finished yet. They still might need this. They still might. I think I can give a little more time. But you have to go do this. And do, I know. But I'm just thinking if I cut out golf, if I, I'm not going to say fishing. If I cut out You know, maybe if I, if I cut out the TV time, maybe if I cut out my YouTube time, maybe if I cut out my Facebook time, we'll go there. I can give, I can give a little bit more. Those, they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. Every morning. Here's the good stuff, verse number five. This gets me excited. And I was so happy I had the privilege of doing this. And they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work, which the Lord commanded to make. Moses, they brought too much. Moses, they got too much. What was it? Oh, the piano, right? We needed more. I had miscalculated. <laughs> and I said, well, we need a few extra hundreds or something like that. I don't remember what it was. And, I, and, and people, all of a sudden, 300, 200, I said, whoa, that's enough. I think we got enough. What a privilege. That was an awesome moment. Stop giving. Stop. That was cool, man. That was cool. Do that again. And Moses gave commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, let neither man nor woman make any more. Man or woman? Man or woman? 
make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary so the people were restrained from bringing. They had to restrain them. Had to tie your hand to your side. Do not go into your wallet. Do not go into your purse. We have enough. And if you're wondering how to give for your free will offering, just write free will offering on the envelope or put it in the offering one way or another. Just put free will offering. This is because my spirit is right. (laughs) For the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it and too much. And too much. You see what happens when a people get on fire to do something for God? I've seen this. People just catch on fire for giving. And all of a sudden, things are coming to them. They're trying to give it away, and they can't give it away because more keeps coming in. Now, that's the Old Testament. Oh, five minutes, six minutes. Okay. Let's stand. We're going to talk about the New Testament giving, the apostolic way of giving, the apostolic church. Is this Bible study okay? I'm talking. I'm, I'm talking slow. I'm trying to move real slow. because I don't want to scream and yell and give you an emotion because what happens with the emotion is when you leave this place, so does the emotion. It leaves you also. And I've been there. I got so excited to give, and the next day or two, I was like, was that really God? Was that, did I really want to give all that? So we don't want it to be emotional. We want it to be a heart condition. Because if it's a heart condition, we don't rely on our emotion. Amen. Does that make sense? It's not, it's not that I emotionally love my kids all the time. That would be crazy. Because they make me mad. They drive me crazy. They do dumb stuff. Am I right, Brother Malloy? Those boys rolling around in the house, I'm sure that they've never broken anything and they've never messed up nothing. You're not emotionally loving towards them. Or your wife, she's probably the one. I can see you fighting with them, but your wife is probably like, oh, my gosh, you guys are going to break this. You're going to do that. You know, we don't always feel, feel like uh, loving someone. But we've made up in our mind. We have a heart condition. We're going to love them. Amen. We don't always feel like loving our kids, but, but you can't kill them. against the law. <laughs> Giving Sister Maddox, and she's such a giver. She, You guys don't even know it. She's consistently buying all the supplies for the church. I got to keep telling her, stop doing that. Tell me what we need. I'll go get it. I don't want one person buying all the, all the toilet paper and cleaning supplies and paper towel and everything. That's not right. That's something... That's a blessing that could be shared by everyone. She said, no, Pastor, I'll do it. I said, no, don't. Yes, if you find paper towel on sale, buy one for you and bring one to the church. (laughs) Praise God. It's easy. It's simple. It's not, that's probably not even breaking the bank, but but some people have different financial situations. But if you want to be a blessing, that's a huge blessing. Praise God. Amen. Let's gather around the front. We've got a few minutes. I didn't go over this time. I want us to pray for a spirit of giving to come over this church. And I've heard it testified over and over again. That when the church began to give, God began to open up doors that nobody ever saw or imagined could ever be opened. Anybody here grow up poor? Do you ever think you'd have everything you have today? Aren't you rich right now? You're rich. Oh, you're blessed. I feel the Holy Ghost. You're blessed. 
I walk around my house. I never thought I'd have that. But terrible thinking on my part. I, I just felt so below anything. I, I came from poverty. I guess that's just the way my life is going to be. But then I met God. It's gonna most of you probably know anyways. When I came here, I got two minutes. When I came here, I was told, take the offering, take the whole thing. That's just what I was told. Sell the building. <laughs> Another person told me that. These were pretty high up bishops. Sell the building. Take the offering. Get as much as you can. I'm like, what is going on? I don't want the offering. <laughs> now, I need it. But that wasn't my heart. That had not, That was not in, in me. That just wasn't me. I said, okay, thank you. <laughs> you ever get some bad advice and you're like, great, thank you. Uh, I got to go. And I looked around. I remember going through this building, every room, and I saw the Sunday school classroom. That was the furnace room downstairs. My wife was weeping. This can't be. We can't have every kid in this furnace room. This is crazy. I said, I know. We've got we've to repair this building. We've got to bring Sunday school back. And we, just, we needed the nursery. I don't want people to know. I don't. And I said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to give my salary back. We're going to give it all back. If you want to run the numbers, it's about... 120,000, something like that, and in, in th a little bit more than that in three and a half years. I gave because I didn't take it. I gave it back to the church. I never felt high, and I never felt low about it. I just felt like it was in my heart to do it, and I just did it. Some people would like 140,000 in your pocket. It'd be nice, huh? Right about now. It'd be real nice. It doesn't mean anything to me. What, what was important to me was restoring this body and restoring this building. That was what was important to me. And because of that, you are all here. Amen. God gave back more than I could ever imagine. Oh, she goes. Just lift your hands up. And I just want us to help my heart, God. God, don't let me see dollar signs, and zeros, and decimal points, Lord Jesus. God, you, you own it all, Lord. It's all, it's all yours, all the money, all the finances, all the blessings. It's all yours, Jesus. We need, uh, we need to have the right heart condition. Condition my heart to be a giver. Condition me, Jesus. Pray for yourself if you need to put your hand on your own head and just begin to pray. God, 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 if I have a, if there's an issue in my spirit, God, if I feel like if I give, I won't be able to pay my bills or I won't be able to have the stuff I want, Lord, help me with that, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. I want to be a giver. Help me, God. I want to be a giver. Oh, Jesus. Transform this church. Transform this body, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Keep on praying, church, just, just for a moment. Just, just talk to God. Talk to Sister Irma, raise your voice. You're, you're praying good. I know you're, you're praying good. You, can, you don't have to be quiet. Amen. Begin to intercede here for your brothers, for your sisters, for your... 
Your giving can mean the difference between somebody finding out who Jesus is and not finding out. It's that important. It's that valuable. Those chairs and tables, you know why we need those? For friend and family day. So you can bring, invite your friends and your family to come to church. And we can have a celebration, a dinner afterwards and, and set them down and, and get to know them. It could be, you feel that? Having chairs and tables, it doesn't add a stardom to me or anything like that. It doesn't mean. The goal is souls always, 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 always. How can we make this a better place for people to to know Jesus? It's just a building, folks. I understand you're the church. Each and every one of us, we're the church on location. Everywhere we go, we're the church. We're the body of Christ. Uh, Amen. Bible study at the Dockery's house, prayer at, at pastor's house. Uh, That's the church on location. At your job, you're the church on location. But this is the building we choose to come together and celebrate. And the world still has that. I got go to church and I'll get God. And those that have that, we'll be ready for them. We'll be ready. They'll have a chair. They'll have a place to sit down. Amen. And a table. And maybe air conditioning next year. I don't know. I know God is able. You know, and, and by your giving, that takes that off my plate. I don't have to worry about it no more. Because you know who's here setting fans up all week long and playing with the, the numbers and getting air conditioning going and, and, and thinking about putting dry ice in the furnaces and turning the fan on and doing all this stuff? It's me. I got to do all that stuff because you you guys just come to church. (laughs) Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Malloy, why don't you dismiss us? I feel. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us all here tonight safely. Thank you for this wonderful message we heard through the giving. In the heart condition, Lord, it's so true. You're 100% Jesus all day long, every day, every hour, every minute, every second we can breathe, Lord. And we thank you, Jesus, for this beautiful evening and your beautiful word, Lord. Bless us when we leave this place. Let us, let us keep going, Jesus. And in your name, Lord, we will, we will win, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good job. The reason why that prayer was so powerful to me is because I know the, the news that Brother Malloy got before he came to service tonight. Like a Job experience, one thing after another. Let's just, man, why don't you just gather around Brother Malloy and ask God to give him strength. His father got two needles, came back, cancer. I think out of the 12 or 14, you said. And that's... Other news from from a a close friend of his. Other news from somebody else. Lord, I'm praying that you use this man. You use his prayers. You give him the words to speak. You anoint his lips of clay, God. Help him to be an encourager, Lord Jesus. Help him to remain faithful and stand strong, oh God, during this adversity, during this storm, Lord Jesus. Oh, right now, God, uh, use Brother Malloy, Lord. Use him mightily, Lord, to bring others to Christ. Uh, Hallelujah. Use this situation, Lord Jesus. Uh, Set us up for a miracle, Lord, in the name of Jesus. (laughs) 